Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. In today's video, I'll show you how you can manage Power Platform capacity at an environment level. And this video is very important for you Power Platform admins because now you can go and allocate a certain capacity at an environment level just to make sure that you don't have any of these environments that go rogue, consume all your capacity and cause a lot of heartache and some sleepless nights, especially of you Power Platform admins. And as a bonus, I'll even show you how you can set up Azure Pay As You Go using the subscription services that Azure has to provide it. So stick around. This is very, very important for you Power Platform admins. But first, here's my new intro video. So let me explain to you why me as an early adopter of Power Platform got really excited when I saw this functionality appear. So for the sake of examples, let's say that there are these two departments, finance and HR, and each of them have their own set of environments. Finance has four of their environments and HR also happens to have four of their environments. And each of them already have some capacity allocated for each of their environments. Like finance has so many of them, two gigs, three gigs, two gigs and two gigs, while HR in one scenario, yes, has seven gigs over there. Completely different environments, completely different requirements, and therefore different capacity consumptions. However, finance anticipated that they are either gonna need more environments or either of their existing environments are gonna need more capacity. More capacity consumption is what I mean. So what they did is they actually went ahead and put in some additional amount to buy some more gigs. And they did this in different ways. They actually went and just purchased more capacity or they purchased more licenses, but the overall capacity amount actually increased. However, in the past, when this capacity was purchased, that overall bundle was actually put in at a tenant level. So at that time, they could not say that, okay, I only want this additional gigs for these four environments of them. What was actually going on though, is that HR was actually consuming. They were doubling in some of their scenarios, their environment capacity. So as you see over here, in some cases it used to be two, like right over the HR environment one, it doubled to four gigs and it just kept growing. But what was really happening was they started tapping into the capacity which actually finance purchased. And finance people were not very happy because they put down the money for it but HR was reaping the rewards. So this literally happened in the past. I know that for a fact. However, now we can solve this problem by putting in an environment level capacity. So do you see why this is more important? Good, now let me show you how the setup and configuration works. So here I am in my Power Platform Admin Center, AKA PPAC, and before you come over here to do any of these configurations, make sure that you have the Power Platform Admin role. That is the highest level, AKA Uber level access that you have for Power Platform Admin. And you need that because that way you are able to see all your capacity, all the consumption and everything that is going on. Without that, you should not be able to make any changes anyway, but it will also not give you a good overview. So keep that in mind, all right? Make sure you have Power Platform Admin Center role. Okay, so now when you come in over here on the Power Platform Admin Center, and this is the current view, all right? This is not even the new Admin Center. I'm showing you what it is right now. If you go to your billing and you go to licenses, you see this overview of all the summary. Go and click on Dataverse. And when you do that, right over here now, you see Manage Capacity. And over here, it basically gives you an overview anyway, but when you click on Manage Capacity, it'll show you all your environments. Also on the top, this looks almost like an error message, uh, but it is just a very high warning that it's giving you. And let's read it. It says, ensure the allocation is within the available capacity limits and no less than the current allocation. If additional capacity is needed, you can purchase more licenses. But this is the important one, is that ensure the license is within the available capacity limits. And it'll make sense to you in just a minute when we're actually going in and putting in some capacity allocation. But me coming in fresh over here, and you might see something similar in your tenant, I already see this overview. In fact, in the status column, it's already saying that some of these environments are already within capacity. So that is great, okay? Out of the box also, some good news is over here. Also, also, a very important thing is that in this scenario to set up your capacity allocations, there is no requirement that these need to be managed environments. 
I mean, these could be any of your environments slash the production ones or the sandbox. Basically, all those environments which are consuming your capacity, those environment types are the ones listed over here. There is no requirement that only managed ones, right? All of the environments that are, that are consuming environments, right? All of the environments that are consuming capacity. All right, so what I'm going to do is now take this high one over here, right on the top, right? I'm going to click on it, and when you select on the hyperlink, it takes you to this overview window. Pretty neat, but let's break down into what it is showing. First of all, it's already showing the allocated capacity. Like right now, what is this environment consuming from a database, file, and a log standpoint? So on the top of there, it'll actually say you that this environment, Christian Family Dev USA, is already consuming 1714.88 megabytes of consumption all right from the file standpoint also it is consuming 1829 megs and from the logs very little so now if you skip this piece and just go right below over here what it is telling you is that hey this is all that the database capacity that you have available so do you does it does that make sense because it's important that you see that before you actually start putting in some numbers over here and just as an overview, the one on the top is telling you how much is already being consumed by this environment. And then the one below here, it is telling you how much you have available. So the same thing over here as well. For the file, below it is telling you that, hey, you've got about 39,786 megs available. And then over here as well, you've got about two gigs kind of available over here, 2,048 meg. So it's important that you see that because now what I'm going to do is that, hey, off this 6,382 that I have available, I'm going to go ahead and put in some limit of additional consumption. Whatever happens, it should not exceed anything more than now 2,000. Now, this 2,000 is not additional 2,000, right? I'm just saying that 2,000 is the allocated capacity. That's the cap because off this 2,000, it is already consuming 1,714. And just to make sure I'm clear, here I am. I can't go and say that, okay, I only want another 1,024 additional amount. No, what it comes back and says is that value cannot be less than the current consumption. So it already keeps in mind the consumption amount that you have, which is 1,714. So you only keep it at that cap. And that cap cannot exceed what you already have over here. So I'll prove that to you as well, all right? We currently have 6,382 left. I can't go ahead and put in 7,000 over here. It's gonna come back and tell me this, that value cannot exceed available capacity. So just to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna say that right now it's already consuming 1,714 meg. Whatever happens, I do not want this to go over 2,000. And the moment I do that, we're good. I don't get any more errors. So do you understand how you go ahead and do this allocation of capacity? Good, because this is very important. So now that you understood the database side, same thing on the files as well. We are already consuming 1,829. However, we have 39,786 left, all right? So what I'm just gonna make sure is that whatever happens, I should not go ahead and exceed the 4,000, all right? So I'm good on this side. And then the logging, I actually don't already consume over here because I'm not using Dataverse. However, in this case, just to be on the safe set, I'm gonna go and say, 500. Don't go ahead and exceed more than that. So this is how the allocation of the capacity happens. But it's also important that we actually take a look on this bottom base because by default under capacity origins, it is already drawing from the available capacity in my tenant. So these overall capacity that I have over here, right over here, see that 13,556 megs, that's my overall capacity. This, everything we are adding over here is drawing from that. But now, in addition to this, you also have the pay-as-you-go billing. And I'll show you that in just a minute because there is some pre-configuration that is needed. But I just want to call out that this is fantastic because there are scenarios where people do not want to go ahead and upfront put in a lot of money to buy these additional licenses to get the consumption. What they're going to say is that, hey, I'm just going to go and make sure that it consumes and money automatically comes out from my Azure from my Azure subscription side. Uh, but over there also I can put some limits, which I'll show you in a minute. So I clicked on save over here and it went and said change is successful. And it's also going and kind of giving me a little bit of graph piece over here. So pretty neat that in one shot I can say that, okay, I'm on the high side just by looking at it. But before we leave, there's also this overage notification because we've put some limits, but we just say that, hey, at certain percentage amount, I want to get a notification. So you don't have the option to actually type in anything. These are the options. So you, you have to cross that 
and then the max is 100%. So I'm gonna keep mine as about 90%. If I hit that 90%, then go ahead and send me some notifications, all right? So this is how you handle that capacity directly at the environment level. And again, you can go ahead and put in some hard numbers, both for database, file, and log. So now that we've seen this settings, let me now go and show you how the Azure Pay-As-You-Go subscription also works over here. So before you can go ahead and use the Pay-As-You-Go model in Power Platform, you've got to come to your Microsoft Azure and set up subscriptions. Now, the concept of subscriptions, you are already familiar with it because there's so much subscription model that we use in our day-to-day -day life. I mean, I use it for the TV channels that I watch, like Hulu. I use it for my Azure Prime uh, subscriptions. That is it. The concept that we use in our day-to-day -day life applies over here as well. Just thought I'll give you an overview of that. But when you come into the subscriptions, there are different subscription models that you have available. So let me give you a few examples of that. So right over here, there is the Microsoft Online Services Program. You have this one central billing account, but over there, you set up multiple subscriptions. And for each of the subscriptions, you have different payment methods and different invoices. Because it makes sense. One subscription could be very specifically for one set of services. The other one could be another. Or different subscriptions were set up by different departments, things like that. So it's best that you can also separate the payment methods. So this is one way to do that. The other one is also enterprise agreements where you've got a central billing account and over there you are going and having one central payment but the subscription is actually broken down at department level and even granular in the department because a department could have multiple accounts in one account there could be multiple subscriptions there is this type of breakdown as well and i'll show you this microsoft customer agreement where you've got one billing account but over there you've got multiple billing profiles which means you've got multiple invoices for different types of subscriptions and then multiple payment that way it makes it easy to break down who is paying what and it's also very fair so i've taken this link i've put it down in the description below you pick and choose which type of subscription model that you want now once you've gone and made that decision what you have to do is actually set it up so I'll actually show you a simple way that I've already done it because you can actually first check with your Azure admin team that this might already be set up for you and you just have to now leverage it for your Power Platform. Otherwise, they can actually, when I say they, the Azure admin team can actually set that up for you. So I'll just show you mine, for example. In my subscriptions, when I come over here, I already see a subscription name. I call it the Visual Studio Enterprise. And when I click on it, right over here, I have my resource groups. And in my resource groups, these are the different subscription types that I have. So now over here, you can see that I've got some set up purely for Power Platform. I call this as a Power Apps External Business Partners one. And then I also have a Power Automate Robotic Process Automation, Power Automate Desktop. Like these are the two that I specifically created for Power Platform. All right. So now that I've shown you my two resource groups in my subscription, let's go back to our Power Platform Admin Center. Again, in the home under billing here in billing plans, you now see that the two subscriptions that I just showed you, I've actually gone and pulled that in over here in the PPAC, Power Platform Admin Center. So you do the exact same thing. You make sure that you already have the subscriptions and then you've got the resource groups. Um, and then once you've got that, you come over here, you click on this new billing plan, click on it, and then you click on the Azure subscription. And when you select it, right over here, you should be able to see which is your Azure subscription which in my case was the Azure Studio one, so I select that. And then you can see all the resource groups that you have access to. So these were all, the, what you see over here is the exact same thing that we saw over there. And for my example, I went ahead and selected these two, all right? So those are the ones that I specifically wanted for mine. Uh, and then once I've gone ahead and selected that, what is the Power Platform products? So most of it for my case was Dataverse, but you actually have the flexibility to go and select all of them, all right? So you pick and choose how you wanna do that. Uh, it is helpful because you can also narrow it down to specific services because you might have power apps, model-driven apps that you're using, Dataverse, and you wanna set up that subscription only for that. Great, it gives you the flexibility to go ahead and break it down to that. However, you cannot do any changes like with or without Dataverse, because let's face it, this entire capacity is consuming Dataverse, so that by default is checked. Make sense? All right, cool, because now I showed you how you go ahead and create these billing plans. And now that you've seen that, what you go back again is into your licenses and then go back to your Dataverse. And in the Dataverse, we go and click on the Manage Capacity and then you pick and choose whichever it is. So for example, I am going to now select this external business partners. 
I go in and select that. And then in my build to my pay as you go, you see, I already have that selected over here. So therefore now the pay as you go is taking care of all the consumption. So should I go ahead and put in some capacity allocation over there? Sure, you can go and do that. But you already got notifications set up over here at the Azure side over there. That in the Azure side, you can already go and put in some caps. Caps means limit. Like if I've already gone and paid an X number of amount, well, go ahead and send me some notifications. Now, for this environment, I'm specifically going the pay as you go billing plan. And that's the and that's the resource group that I showed you just set up. So I know what some of you are thinking. It's like, Daniel, should this be either or where you select one but not the other one and vice versa? Well, technically you can select both, but you need to think about it from your consumption standpoint. Because if you're going to go with the pay as you go billing thing, that means you are paying that out of your own pocket. That means also you are not consuming the existing capacity. So that's how I've done it from my side. In your company, you could have a combination of the two where out of the box, you as an admin are allowing say two gigs of your database capacity, but anything over that will come out into your pay as you go billing. So you can do that as well. Therefore, it's not either or. You can select both of them. You can also go and put in the notification, but just plan ahead of time, like kind of whiteboard this, figure out how you want to do it in your company and then go about doing it. And you can do it at the environment level as well. Otherwise, you can literally go either or where if you're going with pay as you go, do not allow them to consume from your quota of capacity. Just let them pay it as you pay as you go. And in the remaining, you can again go ahead and put in a capacity consumption, click on save. It'll go ahead and save it over here. Give me the overall change is successful. And then I can go ahead and cancel out from here. And now if I go back again to my managed capacity, you will see that we've also gone and done all of this. So it's, so it's pretty neat and helps you manage your entire capacity. So the technical part of it, by technical means the step-by-step, -step, the clicks and everything is pretty straightforward. However, something you might have to do is some whiteboarding. So whiteboarding means planning. Like, do you want to do this for all your environments or only for some specific environments? And even for the pay as you go, do you want to do an either or where if you have selected pay as you go, then should you also give them the option to consume a little bit of your allocated capacity? Like those are the type of decisions. It's hard for me to tell you which one you should do. You will have to make their own judgment call of yours. But once you've decided that it takes very little to actually go and set that up at the environment level. Now, I really wish that this was an environment group level as well. If you're interested in that, go ahead and put that in the comments below. But for what we already have available right now, it's something we did not have in the past. I gladly accept this one. Hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, keep using Power Platform. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.